In this video, I am going to tell you what is earthquake, what are naturally occurring earthquakes, what is earthquake and volcanic activity, what are human impacts of earthquake, what were the biggest earthquakes in the world and some historical views about earthquakes. So let's start step by step. Step number one, what is earthquake? My dears, an earthquake, also known as a quake, tremor, or tumbler, is the shaking of the surface of the earth resulting from a sudden release of energy in the earth's lithosphere that creates seismic waves. Earthquakes can range in size from those that are so weak that they cannot be felt to those violent enough to propel objects and people into the air and wreak destruction across entire cities. The seismicity or seismic activity of an area is the frequency, type, and size of earthquakes experienced over a period of time. The word tremor is also used for non-earthquake seismic rumbling. At the Earth's surface, earthquakes manifest themselves by shaking and displacing or disrupting the ground. When the epicenter of a large earthquake is located offshore, the seabed may be displaced sufficiently to cause a tsunami. Earthquakes can also trigger landslides and occasionally volcanic activity. In its most general sense, the word earthquake is used to describe any seismic event, whether natural or caused by humans, that generates seismic waves. Earthquakes are caused mostly by rupture of geological faults but also by other events such as volcanic activity, landslides, mine blasts, and nuclear tests. An earthquake's point of initial rupture is called its hypocenter or focus. The epicenter is the point at ground level directly above the hypocenter. Step number two, what are naturally occurring earthquakes? My dears, Tectonic earthquakes occur anywhere in the earth where there is sufficient stored elastic strain energy to drive fracture propagation along a fault plane. The sides of a fault move past each other smoothly and seismically only if there are no irregularities or asperities along the fault surface that increase the frictional resistance. Most fault surfaces do have such asperities which leads to a form of stick slip behavior. Once the fault has locked, continued relative motion between the plates leads to increasing stress and therefore stored strain energy in the volume around the fault surface. This continues until the stress has risen sufficiently to break through the asperity, suddenly allowing sliding over the locked portion of the fault, releasing the stored energy. This energy is released as a combination of radiated elastic strain seismic waves, frictional heating of the fault surface, and cracking of the rock, thus causing an earthquake. This process of gradual buildup of strain and stress punctuated by occasional sudden earthquake failure is referred to as the elastic rebound theory. It is estimated that only 10% or less of and earthquakes total energy is radiated as seismic energy. Most of the earthquakes energy is used to power the earthquake fracture growth or is converted into heat generated by friction. Therefore, earthquakes lower the earth's available elastic potential energy and raise its temperature, though these changes are negligible compared to the conductive and convective flow of heat out from the Earth's deeper interior. Step number three, what is the Earth and volcanic activity? My dears, earthquakes often occur in volcanic regions and are caused there both with tectonic faults and the movement of magma in volcanoes. Such earthquakes can serve as an early warning of volcanic eruptions as during the 1980 eruption of Mount S.T. Helens. Earthquake swarms can serve as markers for the location of the flowing magma throughout the volcanoes. These swarms can be recorded by seismometers and tilt meters, a device that measures ground slope, and used as sensors to predict imminent or upcoming eruptions. 
Step number four, what are human impacts of earthquake? My dears, an earthquake may cause injury and loss of life, road and bridge damage, generally property damage and collapse or destabilization potentially leading to future collapse of buildings. The aftermath may bring disease, lack of basic necessities, mental consequences such as panic attacks, depression to survivors and higher insurance premiums. Step number five, what were the biggest earthquakes in the world? My dears, one of the most devastating earthquakes in recorded history was the 1556 Shanzi earthquake which occurred in 23 January 1556 in Shanzi province, China. More than 8,30,000 people died. Most houses in the area were yaodongs, wellings carved out of Lois hillsides and many victims were killed when these structures collapsed. The 1966 Tangshan earthquake which killed between 2,40,000 and 6,55,000 people was the deadliest of the 20th century. The 1960 Chilean earthquake is the largest earthquake that has been measured on a seismograph reaching 9.4 magnitude on 2 to May 1960. Its epicenter was near Kenneth Chill. The energy released was approximately twice that of the next most powerful earthquake, the Good Friday earthquake. 27 March 1964 was first centered in Prince William Sound, Alaska. The 10 largest recorded earthquakes have all been megathrust earthquakes. However, of these 10, only the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake is simultaneously one of the deadliest earthquakes in history. Earthquakes that caused the greatest loss of life while powerful were deadly because of their proximity to either heavily populated areas or the ocean. Their earthquakes often create tsunamis that can devastate communities thousands of kilometers away. Regions most at risk for great loss of life include those where earthquakes are relatively rare but powerful and poor regions with lacks. Unenforced or non-existent seismic building codes. Step number six, the last one, what are historical views about earthquake? My dears, from the lifetime of the Greek philosopher Anaxagoras in the 5th century BC to the 14th century CE, earthquakes were usually attributed to air in the cavities of the earth. Thales of Miletus was the only documented person who believed that earthquakes were caused by tension between the earth and water. Other theories existed including the Greek philosopher Anaximenes beliefs that short inclined episodes of dryness and wetness caused seismic activity. The Greek philosopher Democritus blamed water in general for earthquakes. Pliny the Elder called earthquakes underground thunderstorms. So my dears, this was our video. Now I want to turn it over to you. Which step you like the most? Tell me in the comments. My dears, make sure to subscribe this channel so you don't miss out on my future videos. Goodbye, stay blessed and bundle of thanks for watching.